The ultimate money-making guide within Hogwarts Legacy. Now, if you're a brand new player or an existing player looking for that gold, that galleon, that money, this video will have you covered within all bases. But now I have your attention, people. If you do enjoy this video, leaving a like really helps out. And if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Okay, so within this game, gold is an absolute must for many, many instances. Whether that's buying scrolls, potion recipes, brooms, I mean, you name it, guys. You need that gold for it and today guys i bring you five plus ways to earn gold whether you're a brand new player to the game or an existing player okay so we're going to start with the basics and i know people are going to say this anyway and that is just simply play the game now yes just simply playing the game running through the story the quests this that, and the other you will make that money but let me tell you for an absolute fact you will not make enough i've put 70 hours into this game people and if it weren't for other means, I'd be one broke ass. You need certain methods to earn that money, otherwise you're going to find yourself short. So yes, although playing the game, just playing the game will work, will get you a bit of money, it won't get you anywhere near enough. Okay, so let's start for the brand new players. And let me tell you for an absolute fact, Revilio is your best friend. Spam this button out, guys. It is left on your D-pad. But if you have one of those brand new PS controllers or an Xbox Elite, you can assign it to a different button, maybe one on the back. So you can just spam it out wherever you are. This is absolutely beautiful in revealing hidden chests, gold, and many other things in close proximity to the player. So spamming out that revealio will reveal chests for you, which will reward you gold two times out of three and will earn you a quick little buck. So yes, spamming that revealio is a great way to earn not massive amounts of money, but money early on. Another thing I can't get across enough, and this is definitely for new players too, and that is don't dismantle your gear, only unless you have to. And I say this because you can sell gear as soon as you get to Hogsmeade, which isn't late on. So all those chests you will be spamming that reveal you're on, finding that gear, when you don't find that gold, keep said gear. Doesn't matter what level it is, obviously apply the highest level gear you get, but keep the rest. Don't dismantle it, like I said, until you absolutely have to. That's if your inventory is full. Because again, gear can sell for actual decent money. Especially that higher tier gear, like that legendary and those epics, that orange and purple. So yes, guys, do not dismantle gear. Sell it instead to one of the many Hogsmeade vendors. Another great method in earning money, although this is semi-limited, is to use that disillusionment spell, which makes you go invisible, and open those chests with those eyes. Now these are scattered all over Hogsmeade and all over the castle, and all he uses is that disillusionment, go invisible, walk up to these chests, and then open them. Again, if you haven't got this spell, the eyeballs will spot you and you won't be able to open the chests. So go invisible, open them, and from every chest, guys, you get 500 gold. In Hogsmeade alone, that's 4, 5k easily. Just walk around Hogsmeade, spamming out that Revelio, and you will find these chests all over the place. So if you need a quick book fast, this is a great way in doing so. Now, the best method in this game, without a shadow of a doubt, is capturing those beasts and then selling them to the brood and peck vendor within Hogsmeade. Each beast you do catch will give you 120 gold. And well, there's an easy farm to do this, which just makes life so much easier. This is by far the quickest method in the game in earning that gold. There's no two which ways about it. But you will need to get to a stage in the game where you can actually capture these. That means you need the knapsack. The knapsack is rewarded to you from a deke quest line called the Elf, the Knapsack and the Loom. This isn't a late on mission. I mean, it's probably one of the earlier missions. You will get a mission for Professor Weasley called the Room of Requirement. Upon you doing this quest, you'll then start a quest line for deke where the first one is actually called the Elf, the Knapsack and the Loom, where he goes out and he teaches you about capturing beasts and bringing them back to your vivarium. Finish this quest and you get your knapsack. Then from here, guys, you are free to farm those beasts. Now, when you first get your knapsack, you are tied to, I think it's just 20 or 21 slots within your beast inventory menu. So you can only catch 20 uh, at a time and then sell these. But that's still 2,400. And the farm I'm going to show you guys means you can more or less do this in probably five minutes, which is great in regards to efficiency. Now your beast inventory slots will open up, but you do need to progress the quest lines even further, as well as the main quest line, because you will need to get to a stage of doing the high keep where you rescue your hippogriff. And this will give you 15 extra slots. You then need to do Deke's final quest called the Phoenix Rising quest, where you rescue that Phoenix, that legendary bird. You'll get an extra 10 slots for this. 
and then guys progress to San Baker's trial, which is one of the last missions in the game. Within this mission, you'll come across the Lord of the Shore. This is the Grapphorn. Upon you basically working with the Grapphorn, I ain't going to spoil it for anybody. The Grapphorn then becomes your mount, and you are given another 10 slots. So in total, guys, you can have 50 plus beast inventory slots, meaning, guys, you can farm 6,000 worth of gold at a time. So keep that in mind, guys. But even still, if you've just got your nab sack, you can still take advantage and earn fast gold. And to do this, guys, you want to come to this point on the map right here. Because right above this, guys, is the best den to farm these beasts. This puff skin den right here is utterly incredible. You can capture all of these beasts, I believe there's between 6 and 8 here, in a matter of a minute, if that. And once you've done this, people, once you've caught all the beasts from in this den, simply jump on your broom, go to the point I go to right here on the map, Skip time just once. Once you've done this, go back to the den and all those little critters will have respawned. And you can rinse and repeat these guys until your beast inventory is full. Now what I will say is, make sure you capture all of the beasts with inside of this den. I mean, if you leave one and try and reset it, sometimes it can mess up. So make sure you capture all of these beasts before you do that reset to make the little bastards respawn. But yeah, this is a great, great farm for these little beasts. Meaning you can then go to the Brood and Peck, a vendor within Hogsmeade, and sell everyone you've caught for 120 each, earning maximum money real, real quick. Now, lastly, guys, isn't the quickest method in the game, but it is a great way to earn that money AFK. And to do this, people, you need to have your vivarium open and have the ability to breed those beasts. Now, the ability to breed beasts and where you learn about this is another deep quest, which you will have done if you've done the Phoenix Rising quest. This deep quest is called the Fowl of the Dead. This is where it teaches you about breeding. It insists on you going out and capturing two Festrals, then buying the breeding pen from that vendor within Hogsmeade, and then it teaches you about breeding. Now, whether you have one Vivarium open or the maximum of four, you can still take advantage of this. Now, you can have four breeding pens within one Vivarium. If you've got four Vivariums, that's 16 breeding pens in total. Then all you need, guys, is 16 sets of parents. Doesn't matter what beasts they are, they can even be puff skins. Go to that puff skin den, capture 16 sets of parents, one male, one female, eight of each. And then, guys, apply those breeding pens to your Vivariums and simply brood away. And after 30 minutes, you will have 16 babies. These 16 babies you can then sell within Hogsmeade for 1920 gold. You can do this while you do other things, complete other quests, do other challenges, just breed away. Just leave them to breed and come back for those profits. And you can do this as much as you like. You can put your controller down, do other things in real life, come back after half an hour, sell the babies. Simple as that. And it is a real easy way of earning that money. Again, it's not the most efficient, actually play the game the previous beast farming method is way quicker but again if you're doing other things if you're afk if you got to do school work college work work in general this is a great way to earn money while you don't even actually play the game so keep that in mind guys and there we have it five plus ways to earn easy money in hogwarts legacy guys if you did enjoy the video leaving a like really helps out if you like what you see and want to see more hogwarts be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys i will see you on that next one